the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds a victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out of your the God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause they come upon that cross, they rose up from that grave, my God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. to the screen and Simon will let us know what's going on. All right, church, can you believe it is already August? If you ask me, that is crazy. But August it is and September is coming up as well and both of those months are going to have lots of fun things going on at the life of our church. So we will start off in August. Our WBC Families Ministry, that's our kids and our youth, 
Ministries, they are running an August canned food drive. So just like where we would ask you to donate foods to our Food Hampers program, this time around we're asking just for the tinned canned foods. You can bring whatever you like in those tinned canned foods to church on a Sunday and drop them off at Kids Central with the Kids Program. They've got a cool uh, shelf trolley up there. You cannot miss it. Posters everywhere. We would love for you to contribute to that. Parents, get involved with your kids and on a Sunday morning, get the, um, the tins out of the pantry or add them to your food shops during the week and then your kids can bring them in and learn about what they are doing to help our community as well. So that runs all through August. Kids on Sundays and for our youth as well, they can bring it along on their Friday youth nights. So get to it. Let's really help those in need. Then coming up in September, we have Father's Day with a special Father's Day service. And as part of that service, we will be running child dedications. So if you have been wondering about child dedication or if you've been waiting to do it, now is the chance. We want you to go to wherebybaptist.org.au slash child dedication. Click the button there and fill out the form so we can start talking with you and we'll really make that service a fun one for all of our families. Thank you for your continued giving to the ministry of Werribee Baptist Church. We've seen over the last few weeks that we are making an impact locally and globally around the world, and that's really exciting, and we would love to continue doing that and to expand more and more. So if you would like to give, then you can go to werribeebaptist.org.au slash give to find out all the different ways, all our account numbers and text to give numbers. They are all there ready for you. And if you'd like to give through cash, we have some boxes on the way out of the auditorium that you can do that as well. That's it from me. See you next week. Thanks so much, Simon, for that. Can we just give Simon a round of applause? I don't think everyone realizes how much Simon actually does in the background. It's not just news every week, but he just does so much to help our services run on a Sunday. So we just really appreciate you, Simon. Yeah. We're going to stand and sing another song together. Um, we're going to sing How Great Thou Art. And I just want to share something really quickly. When I was growing up, I remember that this was a song that we sang almost every week at church. And so it was the song that kind of stuck with me in my heart. And it was the way that I connected to God for the first time. And so when I sing this song, I get really emotional because I remember being a little girl in church singing at the top of my lungs, probably louder than all the people around me. <laughs> um, singing about how good God was, even as a little kid, and just knowing that He is good and He is faithful always. So why don't we sing that all together?
communion time, if you are if you are a new Christian time of communion where we share the Lord's Supper bread and wine it is a time that we individually commune with God we remember what he did on the cross he died sacrificially for you and I and if you've been a Christian for a long time you and I know that this is the only time where Jesus said, remember me. So it must be very, very important, significant for Jesus to say that. That whenever my follower get together and share the Lord's Supper, we remember what he did, what he said. He said, this bread that you break in together and eat is my body given for you. We ought to be grateful to remember always is there. And whenever you drink the cup, remember my forgiveness. I don't know where you're at this morning as you come here and you get in that place of worship. Where are you in your life journey? Maybe for some of you, there's been some heavy burdens in your heart. Maybe for some some sin in a life that you struggle to let go. It's been so hard. Maybe for some in our series of rules to live by, you've been finding it hard to follow it through for various reasons. And as we share communion, I want to invite you perhaps just lay them out before the feet of Jesus. As we eat the bread and drink the wine, sit before him and confess those things that are heavy that need to be lifted this morning so I encourage you if you're at home I hope you got something to eat and drink to share with us I hope you pick up the cup on your way here we're gonna eat together I encourage you to open the first layer Let's remember the body of Christ. Let's eat together. Let's open the second layer and we'll drink together. Let's drink. Let's pray. Loving God, we lay those things at your feet. Thank you for getting us to remember you. We seek, Lord, your healing. And we pray 
that as we share in the bread and the wine, as we humble ourselves before you, that we might find that renewal and reconciliations of a broken relationship in our hearts. May we redeem what we lost. May we surrender the things that we struggle with, the sin in our life. And pray for your forgiveness. Thank you that in your, that in remembering there is power. That in your name there is healing. And we declare that so faithful. Thank you for your goodness to follow us each day. We pray that you do that work in our lives as we humble and complete surrender to you. That you may take those burden away. Heal our broken soul. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you as we continue to worship, Lord. Speak to us this morning. You know, I am Jesus, and everybody say, Amen.
1990 and a guy with a blue jacket and a yellow shirt on his record cover released an album called Go West Young Man and for all of those who are old enough to remember that it was Michael W. Smith and that was track 10 on that album in 1990 and that song for so many of us as simple as it is has carried us through moments You've heard that in worship services. You've heard it in large gatherings. You've probably heard it at concerts. And it's taken from an ancient prayer. And Agnus just means lamb. And day means God. You've been singing about the lamb of God. The righteousness of God represented in Jesus. Jesus that we celebrated in communion. Jesus that gives us the ability to enter the Holy of Holies, that gives us access to the Father, that, that, that His righteousness uh, covered His... his he, he took on the sin of the world, right? So that we could be seen as righteous. So that when He sees us, He sees us as His children. He sees us as His creation. And when you look in the mirror and you see something you don't like, He looks at you and He sees Himself. Christ at work in us is what Christianity is all about. This gathering, this moment online or here in the space, it's all about having a moment between you and God. Whatever you get from today, stop and let your soul be fed. You may not be in the mood to sing. You may not have the patience to listen, but say a short prayer and just say, God, Try getting to me anyway. Because he's holy and he's worthy of our praise. And so when we sing Agnes Day, when we sing worthy is the lamb, you are holy. And you just repeat that over and over as the elders did before the throne of God as they threw down their crowns and they said, nothing of me but all of you. It's not until you reach that point of realizing you have nothing to offer that you understand He is everything that you need. And that's what worshiping Agnes Day is all about. Father God, would you help us to hear? Would you help our hearts to understand? And would you prepare the way for your Holy Spirit to work today? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's great to have you with us. My name's Justin. I'm part of the team. How good are these guys? Let's do it again. No, I did prepare some stuff to say, so I should probably... So we'll do some more at the end. Enjoying the Rules to Live By series? Pastor Stan and Dee are not with us today. They are on a break. Uh, which means, see, Stan doesn't actually relax when he's on a break. He just thinks about his next sermon. Uh, so the next sermon is going to be a cracker, all right? So make sure you come back next week for that. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we've had an influencer helping us fully grasp some odd rules to live by. So I don't know. You said Simon was the guy that influenced our church. He decided that we should be watching this influencer. I've been praying for Simon, I've got to tell you. But uh, let's check out today's rule to live by from Lovely. Let's do that. Hey guys, it's Lee here from At Lovely. I know how much you've all missed me and I've missed making these videos. I just get so much out of what I have to say. Have you noticed how crazy life is right now? I've got home stuff, work stuff, Instagram stuff, school trips, sports trips, shopping trips, yoga session trips, 
birthday parties. It is non-stop. That's why I love my rule number four. Mama! Girls, I'm trying to be an influencer. That's why I love my rule number four. Make time for yourself. I've got six days a week for all the other stuff and then I can pick one day just to focus on me. I like to say I keep it holy. Holy about me. Mom! You just got... Isla, not right now, okay? Mom. It's mummy's day. Mom. No, no. Mom. No. Mom. Sorry. You've got to unsubscribe from the drama, you know? Oh. What day is it? Girls, come on. Girls, we've got Cassie's party. Her mum's going to be there. You know what she's like? All right, guys. That's this video done. Remember, make time for yourself. I'll just have to catch up on my me time another time. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we just stop and pray? Because that stressed me out. <laughs> How many people are feeling balanced? Where are all the balanced people? I'll wait. Oh, I had a head scratch there. Does that... No. It's the... It's the I see that bid. I see that bid. Balance is this fantastic thing that I've been hearing about my entire life. Justin, you need to be more balanced. You need to be more balanced with your time. With your time. You need to be more balanced with your... You know, make sure that your education and your work and your play and all of those things fit together. Uh, by the way, you should make sure all of your children get fantastic one-on-one -on -one dad time. You should also make sure they are fed. Actually, that probably comes first. Make sure your children are fed or your friend is fed. If you live in a house with another human being, make sure they eat. If you live in a house by yourself, make sure you eat. This is what surprises me about the human uh, being is that even when we live by ourselves, we struggle to get into any sort of rhythm. When, I've been, when I go away by myself, I'm, I just, I forget everything. I forget to eat, I forget to look after myself, and someone says to me, have you eaten? And then I have to think about whether I've actually eaten, because I'm just that balanced. Where are the balanced people at? I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to help you, you know, feel okay. I, I, I wrote down three things that I think will make your life really, really balanced. Are you ready for this? Like, we've had lovely, now, now I've, I've got to tell you a few things. Oh, by the way, before I do that, if you don't know where we are in the series, that's okay. You can go back and look at our YouTube sites and our social sites and, you know, all of the things. This is like The Price is Right. Anybody remember The Price is Right? First of all, I started, I started out talking about an album released in 1990, and now I'm talking about The Price is Right. You can go back and check those all out uh, and check out the first, the first few that we've done. It's been a fantastic series so far. But this rule to live by is all about time. It's all about balance. So I came up with a fantastic quotation that I will totally live by from now on. You ready for this? Write this down, it's very important. A balanced life consists of work worth doing. Work worth doing, right? Now, people say, do you find a job you'll love and you'll never work a day in your life? Can I just say, <laughs> rubbish, absolute rubbish, that's absolute rubbish, don't even listen to them. It's not true, because work worth doing is hard work. Hard work is rewarding, but it's not always full of happiness and joy. I've been working in church life for a long time. This morning as I stand here and, and speak to you, my parents are, are leading another congregation. That's how long I've been doing church, like the whole time. And I guarantee you that as lovely as today's gathering feels, the lead up to today's gathering was not completely peaceful and it didn't all just fall into place. There was hard work and there were some anxious moments. But as we sit here in the moment, this feels fantastic. And that's why I think this work is worth doing because I love the gathering of the saints. I love when we get to sing together and hear from the word and pray together and remind ourselves that it's not just us. This work is definitely worth doing, but it's not always 
happy. It's not always fun. The humans don't always get along, but it is worth doing. So a balanced life consists of work worth doing. It also has rewarding relationships. Okay? You don't want just relationships. You want rewarding relationships with the other humans in your life. You want to make sure that they're actually enriching your life. You're going to invest into them, and they're going to invest into you, and it's going to be fantastic. And, and at the start of the journey, you know, you get in the car, and you're like, let's all go do the thing together, and, and we're all on the same page. And halfway through, someone starts arguing over what the radio station should be, which, which, uh, which, which takeaway we should stop at, and whether we need to actually go there in the first place because that's how relationships work. Relationships that are deep are rewarding, but they are not smooth. They are not linear. They are not always consistent, right? So a balanced life consists of work worth doing, rewarding relationships, and wait for it, regular, uninterrupted, <laughs> sleep. Where are my balanced people at? Online, we know why you're not here. <laughs> so I'm just going to give them the pastor guilty stare for a while. No. Regular, uninterrupted sleep. And I know that often I, I use my own example of being a parent, right? And, uh, but I know that everybody has their thing. But isn't uninterrupted sleep, like as, as a young person, sleep just gets in the way of all the stuff you'd rather be doing. But you hit an age where you recognize that sleep is the holiest of things. It is where I commune with God deepest. I lie down, and that bed just feels like green pastures. And there is a bubbling brook right next to it. And that's just the Google speaker being a rainforest. And 30 seconds later, a child walks in. Or, let's just go through a few of the weird things that happened. The tap fell off the bar. Why, why did the, why did the, Dad, you better come in here. Why? The shelf fell down. Why did the shelf fall down? Well, I was climbing. Uh, <laughs> calm blue ocean. Serenity now. Uninterrupted sleep. There's busyness and there's richness and there's the rest. <laughs> busyness is the work worth doing. If you've got a job that you love, if, you've got, if, you, if you love what you do in your home, maybe you work from home, maybe you're a parent that stays home with kids, whatever it is that you do, if you find worth in that, that's a blessed thing. And so the busyness can be good and the richness of the relationships can be good. But the richness and the busyness is completely founded on the rest. Because there's days when you think, man, my relationships are fantastic. I've got great friends. There's days when you think, man, my work is fantastic. I love my work. And then there's the other six days of the week. I realized as I prepared this message this week that I am completely unqualified to give this message this week. One of the things we face as preachers is God's word opens and it's like a two-edged sword that cuts between bone and marrow and the Holy Spirit says, good luck with that. Good luck with that. I can tell you that in, in, in this week alone, we have had all of the kids l lose things from their bodies. at rates that mean the whole house need to be washed. Anyone? Was that too much? <laughs> I was going for something gentle and I think I made it worse somehow. <laughs> My wife and I have had very, very little sleep. And I am not qualified to give this message. And I have had days this week where I have felt completely alone in what I am doing. And I am not qualified to give this message. And I have had moments this week where I felt like the work that I think is worth doing is not worth doing at all. 
So I'm not qualified to give this message. And I have had days this week where I have realized that my parenting, well, let's just say it wasn't so good. But this week, I accidentally found a number of moments where if I hadn't been paying attention, the rest wouldn't have come together. On Tuesday, I went to the funeral of a friend who had died just last week. And it was a shock to us all. We were actually preparing for his 60th birthday, and he died three weeks before his 60th birthday. And as I reflected on his life, I realized that he'd been an incredible encourager to myself and other musicians and people around the place. He'd been part of the Christian music scene and Christian books. He'd, he'd probably provided a lot of the books and CDs that you bought from your Christian bookstore. And as sad as that was, I, I attended a gathering with people who were connected through that one life. And we told stories. And little piece by little piece, we understood more and more why Jeff's work had been worth doing. This week, uh, Noah and Ari were out the back. Now, Noah's 16, Ari is nine, and they were playing cricket, a form of cricket, with a down ball. Do you know what a down ball is? It's one of those really bouncy, we call it bouncy high ball and a bat. And so, quite obviously, that will stay in the backyard, Right? Ari came up the stairs absolutely in tears because his big mean brother had hit the ball too hard and, uh, and had gone not one fence over but two fences over. I have had no sleep. I am not in the mood to resolve a bouncy ball issue. This is not a thing. I don't care. Here's $2. Go buy another one. I didn't do that because my children don't understand what cash does. <laughs> so I went and I spoke to my next door neighbor who was actually just on the street there and he was actually talking to one of the other neighbors and I'd only met him a couple of times and reintroduced myself and he said, g'day. And I said, look, Chris, um, the kids, the kids have, have hit the ball and we think it's landed in your yard. I, I, there's, there's no way. There's no worries, mate, I'll go check it out. I kid you not, five minutes later, there's a knock on the door. He's standing there with the stupid down ball <laughs> because he's got a Kelpie. And he said, go find the ball. <laughs> and as I'm looking at this miracle, I realize there's a conversation on here. You know when you get that Holy Spirit nudge? We chatted for the next 45 minutes. In our backyard, he met the kids. We talked about his situation in life. We found out that his family needed a bit of help, that the pandemic had smashed them around, that they'd lost a business, that they'd lost all sorts of stuff, the cars and everything, and that they'd started renting just down the road. And then I found out that his mother's got stage four cancer. And then you stop and go, that's what the rest is about. Because before this, I had no context for this person, I had no context for my neighbor. But suddenly I'm standing in a place where all the foundational work, where I felt unworthy and useless and all of the things this week, all of the foundational work, decades and decades and decades of, of, of making sure I come into the presence of God, of making sure that I hang out with the saints, of making sure that I hear your testimony and I share mine, of making sure all of those things come together in those moments, those very, very precious moments, the rest comes together. Because I have made it a habit, as my parents taught me, to keep coming into God's presence and resting in his presence. So that when, I, when the busyness is overwhelming and when the richness of the relationships isn't there, I've still got me and God and the Holy Spirit can still use me. And suddenly you're speaking into somebody else's life and you are creating the richness for them. And this has happened too many times for it to be a fluke. If you've walked with God a while, you would understand that the Holy Spirit uses all sorts of things to get your attention. So when it comes to the, the richness of the relationships and the reward of work worth doing, 
the viewfinder that makes that all make sense is rest. This is what the law said. It said, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And this is what the Sabbath is. It's a day of complete rest from secular work following six days of labor established and modeled by God. Does anybody in this room or online actually believe they could switch off for 24 hours once a week, every week for the rest of your life? It can be done. We see it in Jewish communities all over the world. But that's a cultural norm. And when you don't have a cultural norm, when you don't have a true north on any of these things, it's really, really complex to get the other parts of the community to agree with you that you are out of contact for the next 24 hours. So I'm not going to put the guilts on you today and I'm not going to tell you you have to do it on Sunday or you have to do it on Saturday or that it has to be 24 hours rest. I just need to tell you that what happens with Sabbath is you, 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 you anchor yourself in the sacred and forsake the secular. Everything that is sacred. And hopefully that's what we're doing in this gathering today. We're opening our hearts and we're opening our ears and we're saying, God, feed my soul. Give me the soul food that I need because I need to be anchored in the sacred and forget about the secular. It says, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Keep it holy. And so today, I don't want to talk to you necessarily about the history of the Sabbath, about, about how it gets done, about all of the different interpretations, because there are a lot of interpretations, and you can, you can talk to people much, much smarter than me. Remember, I'm unqualified to give this message anyway. But I want to tell you that the thing that I read in this rule, in this law, was that we should keep it holy. How you rest determines the rest. You can only draw on the fuel that you actually have. Now, I don't want you to interpret that as sleep necessarily because for all the sleep deprived, there's just seasons of life where you work really hard and you're sleep deprived and that kind of happens. But how you rest determines the rest. Here's the, here's the very simple equation. To rest well, keep it holy. Keep it holy. Keep it holy. Keep it holy. How do I do that, Pastor Justin? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's go to the Psalms. I have asked one thing from the Lord. It is what I desired, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Not one day out of seven, all the days of my life. Now, we don't have a physical house of the Lord. We don't have a temple. We have these gathering places. We have online. We have these, these spaces that we create. But dwelling in his presence is an everyday function of the Christian person. And that's where you rest. And that's where you find rest so that when you've lacked sleep, when you've lacked depth of relationship, when you feel like you have no skill, no ability, and everything sucks, his presence is all you need. And so you make that a desire of your heart. That's how you keep it holy. You check the desire of your heart and you think, I wonder if I desire his presence today. Is that the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning? Because when you wake up in the morning, whatever is on your mind, that can control your day. Make it about his presence. Psalm 16 says, in your presence is abundant joy. At your right hand are eternal pleasures. My goodness, we're not even talking about the moment and the space and where you are right now. We're actually talking about eternal pleasures. There is this life, there is the one to come, and the consistent line through that is his presence. In Psalm 92, it says, what a beautiful thing to give thanks and sing an anthem to you, the high God, to announce your love each daybreak, sing your faithful presence all through the night, accompanied by dulcimer and harp. I love hammer dulcimer. Any other country fans in the room? Hammer dulcimer. There, you go look that up on Google. Uh, but <laughs> accompanied by dulcimer and harp and full-bodied music of strings. Do you know Psalm 92 is called a song for the Sabbath? This is actually a song written for the Sabbath. So when you think, how do I keep it holy? 
You desire his presence all the days of your life. You recognize that in his presence is fullness of joy. And then you make an effort to create these moments. That's why I think this gathering today and the gatherings that we make, wherever we make them, are work worth doing. Because when we get together like this, there is an energy, there is an excitement, there is a shared faith, there is a shared story. It fuels us, it anchors us, it gives us hope for tomorrow. Jesus even took it one step further where he said this, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Religion is just reciting the same thing over and over again because you were told to because someone said it was the right thing to do, but you don't know exactly why it's the right thing to do and there's no feeling associated with it and there's no fruit in your life. When there's no feeling and there's no fruit, it's just religion. Faith and relationship go together because the depth of relationship you have with God and the work worth doing that you do for him is the thing that will actually give you rest. Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. Every now and again, when you read the words of Jesus, you need to understand how big of a deal this is. My goodness, you will recover your life? Let that sink in for a second. And I'll show you how to take a real rest. A real rest. Another version of that says, be yoked to me. Take your burden off, put my burden on. It doesn't say, just try and figure it out all yourself. The yoke is the thing that connects you relationally. It says, you and me, we're walking together. We're walking side by side. If you think of the two oxen side by side, the wooden thing that goes across the two oxen's necks, that's a yoke. That keeps them in step. That keeps them moving in the same direction at the same time together. Jesus is saying here, be yoked to me. Walk in step with me. Rest with me. He went on to say this when he was talking to the religious leaders about the Sabbath. Then Jesus said the Sabbath was made to serve us. We weren't made to serve the Sabbath. In other words, the thing that these guys had turned into a religious rite that made no sense, that was hard to stick to, and people kept disobeying the rules and kept getting, in, getting into trouble. He was saying that's not the point. It never was the point. The Sabbath is there to serve us. He says the Son of Man is no lackey to the Sabbath. The, the picture that I get in Exodus chapter 3, remember when, 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 when Moses comes out, and Moses at this point is an old man. His youth and vigor and warlike tendencies have gone. His leadership has gone. He's been stripped of everything. He's now just a shepherd at the back of Burke. And he comes to this place at the, at the foot of Mount Horeb, and he sees a, a bush that is burning. It's a very famous image, and you've all heard that story, but I wonder if you've stopped to think about the idea that the holiness of God was represented in a bush that was burning, but there was no fuel. There was no fuel, and it never went out. It never went out. There was no fuel because God doesn't need any fuel from us. We need fuel from him. But when you light a fire, when you take that moment and you take that flame, there's this beautiful moment where all of your eyes just went right there, didn't they? And I don't have an analogy for that. <laughs> Will the smoke alarms go off? Let's do this. Never work with children, animals, or flame. This flame, I love. Anybody just love lighting a fire? I mean, not. <laughs> I, know there's some, I know there's some crew here that we worry about you a little. It kind of brings your eye to it. And when you're close, you can, you, you can kind of taste the air. And it, and it fills your nostrils. There's a smell to it. There's a beautiful smell to it. This idea of God being represented by fire that doesn't even burn up the fuel around it is the idea that his presence, that his holiness would overwhelm us, would take our focus, would, would just take us over. There's a beauty in God's presence that when you feel it, when you know it, is utterly astounding. And if you're trying to find that balance in your day and, and you haven't taken the time to keep it holy, perhaps for you, next, you know, the next morning you wake up, maybe light a candle and just remind yourself. Give yourself a physical reminder of his presence. 
Because the busyness, the richness, and the rest is all anchored in holy Sabbath rest. Remember, Sabbath means perfect rest. The rule to live by is simple. Give him everything you got. Moses comes to the foot of that burning bush and he hears this voice and it says, take off your shoes, you're on holy ground. Do you recognize that wherever you are, the person sitting in your seat, the person sitting on your couch at home, wherever those feet are, that's holy ground. And if you could recognize the holiness of God working through you, or at least trying to get your attention, then you might take this moment, if not a whole day, at least take this moment to allow his presence to impact your life. Whatever it takes to keep it holy. For me, yes, my life is busy. Yes, it's interrupted and it's chaotic and it's all of those things, but it's fun and whatever. But I do all sorts of things to bring my, bring my eyes to the right place, bring my ears to the right place, bring my heart to the right place. Because if I didn't, I would be even more unbalanced than I already am. And I do that with podcasts. Jody knows that, <laughs> that if I'm struggling to sleep, there's a sermon playing in my ear because <laughs> preachers send me to sleep. <laughs> Pastor Inaka just snored on the front row. <laughs> Stop it, Justin. You have to be deliberate about taking the time to keep it holy. Do you know how unaware of time we are? I've got one little experiment to do with you and then we're gonna, whoop, then we're gonna finish. Close your eyes for a minute. I'm gonna get my timer out. And I'm gonna time you for 15 seconds. And at the end of 15 seconds, don't look at anything. Don't get your own timer out. You're gonna clap at the end of 15 seconds. Ready, set, go. When you get to 15 seconds, clap. There it is there. You can open your eyes. When you're having fun, time flies. When you're bored, time slows down. Time has pace to it. But we're all on different timelines. Whatever it takes in your life to find time to set aside, and congratulations to all of you who have managed to do this on a Sunday morning. If you're watching this any other time, congratulations to you too for taking the time to do this with us. Wherever your feet are, God is with you. Therefore, that ground is holy ground. You can take time. You can take time to keep it holy. Because the busyness, the richness, and the rest is founded in holy Sabbath rest. That fire of His Spirit that burns in us, I've been trying to understand that my whole life. Some days it doesn't feel like it's there. And you might have heard what I said before as just a throwaway preacher line, but you need to understand that that was not a throwaway preacher line. There are days when I feel completely unqualified, that I do not have the right to lead you in worship or try and teach you the word. 
But I recognize that this rhythm that has been created in my life from the get-go that I've tried so, so hard to keep in my life that becomes a discipline, a momentum. There are times when you've walked into the building and, and you don't want to be there because of some of the other humans in the building. Don't worry about it. It's you and God. There are times when we've avoided the gathering because of all of the stuff going on in our lives. Don't worry about it. It's you and God. We're going to keep doing this every week forever because we know that the rhythm is worthwhile because rhythm and rest go together. I want you to be busy with work worth doing that you love. I want your relationships to be rich and rewarding. But I want you to understand that of those two things, you have very little control over lots and lots of elements of those things. The one thing you can do is decide today to rest in His presence and stop trying to control the rest. Because the rest will sink you. But rest in Him will anchor you and hold you. Why don't we bring the lights down? Let's just have a moment together. stand with us for a moment. Uh, we've got just a couple of minutes up our sleeve here. But I've got, our team is here. If you would just like a friend to pray with you, if you're feeling unbalanced and you're feeling that insanity of the world around you and you think, I just, I don't know even how to find the rest, like I can't, I can't even, I can't even com compute or contemplate or, or figure that out right now. Do you know what I've done throughout my life is in gatherings like this, I've just walked to the front and asked somebody to pray with me and I can't tell you how healing and how wonderful that can be. So we're gonna sing together and I'll invite you to come and just stand either side here and one of our team will come and pray with you. But here's the thing, don't be stubborn about it. It's not worth it. If the Holy Spirit is giving you a nudge and you need to pray with someone and you need someone to stand with you, just do it, just do it. Pastor Inake, Abby, the whole team are here. We'll pray with you, but we've just got a couple of minutes. Can we just sing, what are we gonna sing? Yeah, all my life? Yeah. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so
Well, church, I don't know about you, but that's very moving servant this morning. I just want to invite you uh, to come. The lights will remain in the dark. Feel free to come and join us for coffee and tea. But I want to invite you to come and take the opportunity to rest, to start the journey of rest that Pastor Justin has challenged each and every one of us here. I don't want to repeat what he said, but I'm sure God has already tapped into your shoulder one thing, if there's one thing that he struggled to deal with rest. The team are here. I'm going to invite you to come and we'll pray. If you want to talk to someone about rest, and I'll make sure you speak to one of the pastor, check with group leaders, continue the conversation because this is so crucial. Without rest, I've seen it in my life, how it destroy relationships. So let's take it to heart what God is saying to us this morning. Thank you so much for joining us online. Have a good week, and we're so looking forward to see you next time. And God bless you all. Music will be playing. Please come forward for prayer. Thank you, Pastor. Let's give one more time to Pastor Justin.